This week's best MMA bets, we're talking UFC Louisville. I'm going to give you guys my lock of the week, my most confident picks on the card. We'll talk the favorite underdogs, the D-Gen props of the night, the parlays, and then we finish it out with the D-Gen parlay section. So make sure you guys smash that like button, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe it up. Last week was disappointing, to say the least. The confident pick section sweeped marvelously, but Alex Morono, who was supposed to be a staple lock, fell through and ended up fighting pretty badly. That was the worst version I've ever seen of Alex Morono. You know I'm taking that L on the chin, but I'm pretty irritated about it. I haven't seen Morono look that gassed in a third round ever. He completely fell apart against Nico Price, who may be the slowest welterweight on the UFC roster. So it's a shameful lock without a doubt. I'm embarrassed about it, but truth is, I really thought better of Morono, and he really under-delivered, so I need to over-deliver for you guys this week to bring it back, and I'm going to. That's why I got the shave sides event. The good luck mullet is back, so without further ado, the lock of the week. Jared, the killer gorilla, Cannoneer! Jared Cannoneer, underdog lock. Yes, He's going to beat Nazaruddin Amavov. It's plus 105 for Cannoneer to win this fight. I love the odds. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I thought he would be a 2-1 to one favorite for sure. Imavov's coming off a decent win over Roman Delidze, but I don't think he looks spectacular. He showed in that fifth round he can be backed up. His volume drops, and as good as he is from the outside, he gets flat-footed late in fights. Jared Cannoneer finishes fights better than Imavov, He's more proven in the full distance of five round fights. Championship rounds four and five. Kenanier is going to be lighting them up. I think Amavov is dangerous in the first two, but he's not going to knock Jared Kenanier out. Amavov has an average fight time of like 15 minutes and a few seconds. He's a decision winner. He's not a knockout specialist. Kenanier definitely has more power. I could see late in the fight Kenanier hurting Nazaruddin Amavov. I think Jared Cannonier is going to put a pace on him late. I think the first round could be Amavov's, but Cannonier starts coming on strong. And when Cannonier gets going and finds his flow state, he's one of the best middleweights in the world. And I really do believe Jared Cannonier can fall right back into the title picture. He has a win over Sean Strickland. Say what you want about the decision. On paper, it's a win. Last time, beat the hell out of Marvin Vittori. Injury layoff, and he is 40. But if there's any guy that keeps his body primed at 40 years old, it's Jared Cannonier. I think he beats him off of plus 105 the dog. I think it's going over two and a half rounds, which is minus 285. I think that's pretty damn high confidence. And a decision win, the official prediction is minus 235. Give me Jared Cannonier. Give me win. Give me underdog. And let's go. That is the lock this week. And I'm feeling like we're getting fire. I went with the dog this week because I have some Fuego most confident picks. And I felt that Cannonier was an undeserving underdog. I think he should have been the favorite. So why would I not call him the lock? Cannoneer high confidence for the W. Let's talk most confident picks. I'll bring them up on the screen. We'll go through each one and then I'll elaborate more in depth. We have Raul Rosas Jr. We have Eduarda Mora. We have Brad Katona and Taylor Lapilas. Now, I like Raul Rosas Jr. to outwork, outmuscle, and outgrapple Ricky Tercios. Tercios is a guy who's way too comfortable on his back. He doesn't have the power or volume, I think, to keep Raul Rosas Jr. off of takedown attempts for the whole fight. Uh, he doesn't have the top control to really threaten Raul Rosas with anything substantial. I think that Rosas Jr. is going to body Ricky Tercios. Win by decision for Rosas is up at plus 200. And I think that's rather likely because Tercios does have good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's going to be hard for Rosas Jr. to get the finish. Rosas straight money line, minus 215. It's a very high confidence pick. I respect Raul Rosas's game. And he's 19 now. He's not 17 anymore. And I think he can do good things here against Ricky Tercios. Next up, Eduarda Mora. Now, why am I putting a girl who's only 1-0 in the UFC as the call? I think she's a female jail 10 Almeida. She's a monster. I mean, she didn't even make weight last fight, but she's terrifying at 115 pounds. 
she might be off weight here in this fight. So the weight cut is, I guess, a potential concern here with Mora. So we'll put a little asterisk, assuming she doesn't look like a dead woman on the scales. I think there's a chance she comes in overweight. And I think she is going to have to eventually move up to 125. She seems more like a 125-er. Denise Gomes is awesome. I love her boxing. But she's going to get taken down consistently and bodied on the floor. I think Mora is live to submit her or get her with ground and pound. And Warda Mora is a master on the ground. And I think that's Denise Gomes' biggest weakness. You can't get taken down four times by Angela Hill, a lot by Loma Lukbume. And then I can't have confidence in you against a girl that seems to be a terrifying grappling force. I'm going Eduardo Mora, minus 170 money line as a high confidence pick. Now, Brad Katona, next up. Minus 625 from Mr. Brad Katona. Yes, he's a disgusting favorite, but he better win this fight. If Brad Katona loses to Butler, what a fumble. Two-time Ultimate Fighter winner, and he's getting released from the UFC again. He's going to take down Butler pretty consistently. He'll outbox him. Even though Katona's at a reach disadvantage, he's used to this. Decision win for Katona makes a lot of sense to me. That sits at minus 185. And the over two and a half rounds is currently sitting at minus 240. Katona is not a normal finisher in fights. It would be a surprise. I know Butler was quickly knocked out by Jim Miller. But that was at 155. This fight's at 135. I don't even know if Butler can make weight. Butler historically has fought at 145 pounds his whole career. And he decided, you know, debut, short notice. Yeah, you're going to jump in, fight Jim Miller up. But to fight Katona at 135 and Butler's 5'10", he looks skinny at 55. He's going to look like a rail thin at 135. It ain't going to work. Katona's going to beat him. Brad Katona, high confidence. Then Taylor Lapilus to beat Cody Stammen. Range advantage, big cage, takedown defense. What is not to love about Taylor Lapilus' style in this fight? Yes, it's a chalky line at minus 270. It's a parlay piece. Decision win is minus 150. I do believe he's going to go out there and win a decision. The over two and a half is going to hit at minus 350. Cody Stammen is at a substantial disadvantage in the reach. I don't think he has the wrestling prowess to consistently take Lapalus down and control him. I can see him backing him up a little bit against the cage, getting some control time. But Lapalus has good takedown defense. He's very knowledgeable in all areas of the game. He's an extremely well-rounded prospect. Taylor Lapalus is a really good fighter. Don't write him off from beating a lot of these guys because he lost to Farid Basharat, definitely the better of the Basharat brothers. Taylor Lapalus' game is very solid. I was upset when they put together the Basharat fight because I said, man, you can build Lapalus. He's not going to beat Basharat. I picked Basharat there, but I like Lapalus a lot normally. Against a lot of these more average size UFC bantamweights with ass skills, Taylor Lapalus is talented. Taylor Lapalus is going to win. I'm going Lapalus as a most confident pick. Now, I do have an honorable mention I will honorable mention the side of Bruno Ferreira. The reason I am not including him is because I really think it's a knockout or bust fight. Either he's knocking Stoltzfus out or he's gassing out and ending up fumbling the bag. You get what I mean there? I think that him down the money line is a little wide in that minus 270 range. But knockout is very live. We'll talk about the knockout when we get to the uh, prop section. But let's jump to the next section, the favorite underdogs on this card. So this card... The favorite true underdog is Radke for me. He's plus 195 as a dog. Him to win by submission is plus 800. Radke's ground skills are really good. Protes is a good Muay Thai practitioner, but I have question marks about his game. I think he's going to get bodied if he ties up with Radke. And it's not like Radke can't box. In the boxing range, Radke has more power than Protes. Now, from distance, yes, that is Protes' world. He landed a devastating straight shot that flatlined Trevin Giles. He's really good from the outside. He's got good punches, good kicks. From distance, he's a maestro. But Radke's a good pressure fighter. And I think Radke is going to show out here against Protes. I think he gets inside, makes it nasty, throws big punches, mixes in takedowns. And I'm calling submission for Radke. I think it's worth a touch. Plus 800 for submission? Absolutely. I think Radke's subbing him. Radke has really good jujitsu. I think Charlie Radke's a great call. Plus 195, tremendous. Submission win, plus 800, also tremendous. I think these are going to be pretty A-tier picks as far as underdogs go because I think that Radke's got a great chance to beat Prates here in this fight. Next up, we have Reese to win. Okay, the Reese call at plus 115 is not my favorite. I think it's a 50-50 fight between him and Marquez, but I am officially picking him to win. So, you know, why not include him in the section as an underdog? Because he is an underdog pick. Now, 
he's an unproven underdog. He's 0-1 in the UFC. He got slammed bad by Cody Brundage. But Julian Marcus is a flawed fighter. I think Reese is very live to win as a dog. I am officially calling submission, which is up at plus 460 on some sites. I also think we're going under 2.5. Under 2.5 is beautiful here. That under 2.5 line makes a ton of sense. It's around the minus, what are we at? Minus 385, I see as low as minus 365. It ranges from there. The under makes sense to me. Under two and a half is calling my name. The way Marquez fights, he puts it all on the line. And he gasses in fights too. We could run out of steam, and I think Reese could sub him up. I think it's going to be a decent matchup. I think that Reese has more to give than he showed against Brundage, and I still think his jiu-jitsu has a big edge over Marquez. And he's a decent kickboxer with really nice high kicks. I like Reese to pull it off. I'm going with Zachary Reese as an underdog official pick. And he is a good underdog call, I believe, at that plus 115, plus 120 range. Now, next up, this is an even money fight. But currently, I'm finding Daniel Marcos to be sitting at around minus 105 as essentially an even money underdog. Double thumbs up. Two thumbs up in the air. Yes, Daniel Marcos is going to beat John Castaneda. Daniel Marcos is good from the outside. He picks his shots really well. He's a smart kickboxer who knows how to use range, and he also has quality takedown defense. Castaneda's decent in the stand-up with his low kicks too, but Marcos is way smoother and cleaner. Marcos to win by decision is my official prediction on the fight. Currently, the decision win for Marcos is sitting at plus 165. So you can grab some plus money, but... Why plus money it when you can get essentially even money down the center? And if Marcos does catch him with a knee up the center or a beautiful front kick and knocks him out, you're not kicking yourself because you threw it all on decision win. Marcos is a very valuable dog. Even money dog, but a damn good dog. I think Daniel Marcos is going to pull through for us on fight night. Those are three favorite underdogs on this UFC card as well as the dog lock. So there's a lot of underdog love for me this week. I do want to jump to the D-Gen prop section. So what I like is the Beza Soriano under two and a half rounds at minus 250. The Lee De La Rosa over two and a half rounds at minus 360. Quality calls in my opinion. Now, Lee to win by decision. Andrea Lee beat Montana De La Rosa by decision a long time ago. I think she gets her by decision again. It's plus 130. Okay, tag. Worth mentioning because it is a pick that I have fair confidence in. Now, Ferreira, like I said, he was too wide to throw down on the center. But knockout minus 175 I do think is live. Maybe you're parlaying that up with a high confidence pick. The under 2.5 makes a lot of sense at minus 350. I think Stoltzfus is going to be too stiff for him. Ferreira is... Probably the, he is, he's the honorable mention of the most confident pick section. He's a knockout or bust, I believe, though. So, Ferrer by KO makes a lot of sense. If you want to touch the money line in a parlay, minus 275, he is live in some. Just be a little worried, because if he doesn't get Stoltzfus out in the first seven and a half, eight minutes, the power style that Ferreira has is a style that gasses, and a guy like Stoltzfus could potentially submit him late in the fight. And that's where the concern will lie, and that is why more of the knockout side on Ferreira and not the most confident pick side is, uh, you know, why he's in the D-Gen prop section as opposed to being a true most confident pick, honorable mention aside. So those are some props that I'm feeling. I already dropped the slew of props with the lock, the most confident picks, and the favorite underdog section. So this section has a little bit of extra steam on it for you guys. Now, I do want to jump to the next section, the fan favorite section, the parlay section. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash the likes. I hope you've been enjoying the graphic because I think it's a game changer for me having this graphic. Let's go through it all. Rosas Jr. and Taylor Lapalus, plus 102. Hits. I think it's safe. Rosas Jr. and Brad Katona, probably the safest at minus 140. Hits. Rosas Jr., Katona, and Eduardo Mora. It seems safe-ish to me. Plus 177. Now, Rosas Jr., Katona, Mora, and Daniel Marcos. A little bit risky because you got the dog action in there. But at plus 442, value to risk seems very viable. Rosas Jr., Katona, Mora, and Taylor Lapalus. High confidence calls all down the center. Risky, yes. Plus 228. I think the likelihood of success is pretty damn high here with all the high confidence calls. Now, Rosas Jr., Katona, Mora, Lapalus, and Daniel Marcos is riskier. It's plus 658. 
Now, if you want a little alternate action, you want a dog in a high confidence, you got Cannoneer Rosas Jr. at plus 203, which is valuable and safe, I believe. Now, Cannoneer Rosas Jr. in Katona at plus 259 is also pretty live. Cannoneer Rosas Jr. in Lapilus is very solid at plus 325. Now, Cannoneer Rosas Jr., Lapilus, and Mora brings you to plus 590. It's also live. Soriano, Beza under two and a half. This is a nice little weird one. Reese and Marquez under two and a half. Lee De La Rosa over two and a half to put all over unders in one, a three peat plus 128. It's weird, but I think it hits. And you could mix and match that with some high confidence picks. Like you put Rosas Jr. on it. Maybe you're putting Lapalus on it. Maybe Lapalus and Cannoneer. You can get some steam going. Now I have an alternate. Lapalus and Mora is plus 127 as an alternate. Because I realized, I said, man. Rosas Jr. is what the life the life is all connected to. So for some of you that don't like Rosas Jr., maybe you're looking at Katona and Moore and putting them just together. Or maybe you're looking at everything with Rosas Jr. that's in, and you take him out, and you replace him with somebody else, or maybe you're just riding with the rest of them. Some ideas for you guys with these parlays. Bet them intelligently. Two, three fighters, the highest likelihood of success. When you go more than that, it's lottery ticket. And that's what the whole next section is dedicated to. Complete... Degen parlays. Cannoneer, Radke, and Marcos give me all underdogs. It's plus 1130. I think it's very live to hit. Now, Cannoneer, Radke, Marcos, Rosas Jr., and the Reese Marquez under two and a half, plus 1250. Another one I think is very live to hit, but it's Degen AF. Lapalus by decision. Mora inside distance. Cannoneer, Rosas Jr., and Marcos plus 2485. Cannoneer, Marcos, Radke, Mora, Lapalus Decision, and Andrea Lee, plus 5,452. Now, even though I have everything written down, you guys know I don't like to just go with what I wrote down before. I like to create a little bit of magic for you guys during the show. So in my brain here, I'm like, okay, what can I do? What can I mix in that makes sense for plus 1,000 or more, Jared Cannonier. okay, he's an underdog in this fight, plus 105, plus 110. We're going to leave Rosas Jr. out because he's in so many of them that I think maybe I got to have a little alternate action storming just in case. Lapalus, plus 194. Lapalus and Cannonier together is something that I think is quality. Now, if you don't want ladies fights, you don't want the Mora fight, you want a guy who I'm confident in, that you can see winning. I think it's Daniel Marcos. Now it's plus 474. I got to get it to plus 1,000. I do. I must get it to plus 1,000. I'm going to add in Katona at minus 549. It brings me to plus 579. So it's not quite degen enough. It's five times your money, which is magnificent, but not degen enough. We're going to put Bruno Ferreira. Plus 850. Now we're close. Bruno Ferreira at plus 850. We're going to put the Andrea Lee over on the lineup. Where is this Andrea Lee over? Currently, I'm not seeing it. What is the tag of the over so I can find the perfect line? It's minus 360. Okay. Let me see if I can find something close to that. Minus 360. Where are we at? This is the magic I'm working with right now. Live. Coming at you guys. All right. I got to find a minus 360 tag because I found it. There we go. So if we put Andrea Lee's over... Bruno Ferreira, Brad Katona, Daniel Marcos, Taylor Laplace, and Jared Cannonier all together. We got plus 1114. Now, if you wanted to take that a step further and you wanted to go a little crazier with it, but you still, you know, wanted to keep some relative sanity to yourself, Cannonier, good call. I think he's going to pull through. Cannonier is plus 110. Okay, Ferreira by knockout makes a ton of sense. It's around minus 150. I got it at minus 130 here, I'm seeing. Plus 272 for those two. Now we need more. We're going to go Lapalus, and we're going to do a Lapalus call straight by decision. Now the line for decision, again, I got to find it here because I got best fight odds next to me, but it's not showing everything. Decision win for Lapalus is minus 150. So let me find a minus 150. All right, minus 150. Now it's plus 519. The over in the ladies fight between Lee and De La Rosa. Now we're at plus 696, Okay. We're making leeway. We're making rounds. Daniel Marcos, plus 1454. If you add him 
to the lineup as well. So that's pretty savage in D-Gen, but not quite D-Gen enough. We're also going to add in Charlie Radke, and now we're at plus 4,563. So let's repeat it. It's Cannoneer Moneyline, Ferreira by knockout. Okay, and then it's Lapalus by decision. It's the over in the Andrea Lee fight. It's Daniel Marcos and Charlie Radke plus 4,563 and what I will call supreme degeneracy. So bet these intelligently. Think about them. Do your own research. Don't bet blind. And uh, listen, be smart. Let's catch some W's this week. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of This Week's Best MMA Bets. I hope you're enjoying the fresh mullet, too. I had to bring it out for you guys. Thank you guys for the support. Smash the likes if you're new. Subscribe. Let me know your lock on the card, your favorite underdog, and definitely drop some of your favorite bets, whether it be props or parlays. I want to know what the people are thinking. Make sure you turn the post notifications on. If you haven't yet, keep your eyes locked into the channel with the daily content. And let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you got nothing to say, W in the comments. As always, I appreciate the support. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.